Word of Life brought to you by jerichorehab.co.za Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, thinking Era 10, fragmentation. It, it comes down to uh, things that we teach ourselves and um, as not finishes. We don't, we start with the most passionate hearts with the getting things started and, and things go well and then slowly but surely you just lose all interest in it. Nothing's uh, that important to you anymore. You're looking for something else to do because this thing wasn't as you thought it was going to be. It's not like you feel it anymore. So you, you stop. Same thing happens in this environment. People come in here with a super optimism. They're going to change their lives. Nothing's going to stop me. And then a little brick in the way. And then uh, everything, nope, this is not for me. I'm okay. I didn't uh, use too much drugs. So you start thinking to yourself, it was only a little drugs. It only was every second day. It only was uh, a couple of things. And then, you know, that, that kind of thinking takes you down the rabbit hole. And you don't complete anything. You start so many things. This is why when you tell your family, it's like, hey, listen, mom, I'm going to find a job. I'm going to do well. It's going to be lacquer. They're like, sure, my sweetie, sure. <laughs> First morning you get up, you even make your bed, you start doing some, uh, some research on the internet. Before you know it, you get a little link that says, funniest moments on a boat. Like, all right. So in there, next, before you know it, three hours gone past, you haven't looked for a job at all. You haven't started. You start with the most enthusiasm, don't end anyway. Every door that you touch is just left open. I can teach it because I've done it. Uh, so many times. And sometimes I'll like stop myself from fragmenting. It says that this is extreme change in a person's mental state that occur with, uh, within short periods of time. There's a pattern of uh, starting something then changing his mind. He goes with whatever he's thinking about at the moment, forgetting anything that he might contradict his current plan. If you know that you have this kind of thinking, and as you sit here, you probably run through your mind now, there's a lot of things I've started and never finished. Uh, it's very easy, you just, uh, the little things that you do here, you can start and finish, you know. You start with your duty in the morning, like, uh, this is the way you sweep in the morning, and then uh, when the monitor's gone, you... <laughs> and it comes back, you... I'm done, yeah? You fragment that. You, you, you don't focus on the task at hand. You focus on 20 other things except what you have to do right now. And finish what you do right now. If you have to do homework, just focus on your homework right now. You mustn't focus on these small little stuff. These things that, that actually they're insignificant to you while you are here. And re they really are, but they consume your mind. Absolutely obsessed about it. Obsessing about it. And then you distract it from what you really need to think on. Fragmentation is used to dismiss uh, sentimentality and religion uh, when they don't fit with your current desire or plan. People think that they, they're doing the right thing because they can make decisions, but they can't discern between right and wrong. Because let's face it, in addiction and those kind of things, you do so wrong that all that you think about is the wrong thing, but it becomes truth and right to you. And in scripture, in Ephesians, it says, you know, you don't know how dark something was until someone shines a light on it. And then the Bible says, in the same verse, it says, then something that is illuminated gives light to others. So you help people along then. And the thing that you kept in the dark becomes illuminated just in simple words. And now you can share it and bring it to the light in other people because you are now a light. Spiritual issue is a spirit of disorder. A double-minded spirit. He's like a wave being tossed around like the wind. Double-minded, unstable in all these ways. I like saying this. Does it say some of your ways? It says all your ways. Because even if you think you're doing something right, you're not because you're unstable. Ah. That's the truth. I've seen it so many times. When some of you battle with the being here and being out there, you're unstable in all your ways. And then you ask you like, what's wrong? Nothing's wrong, Jacques. I'm fine. 
like, okay, brother. <laughs> Speak to me when you're ready. You know? But uh, these are the little things that are actually supposed to grow your faith and your, and your knowledge and wisdom and uh, faith in the Bible because these things happen around you all the time. You can see them in yourself. And this book was written, some of it, four or five thousand years ago. And the New Testament, two thousand plus or two thousand more or most minus years ago. So the same things that we're struggling with there. These days, we just, uh, the, the Bible outweigh, well, our feelings outweigh the Bible. So we need to get back to, to what God says about us and what we need to do to, to make sure that He's, uh, you know, we're for Him and not against Him. You know? The thing is, it's very clear that you'll be uh, spat out if you're lukewarm. Not my word, Jesus' word. And I don't want to be spat out by Jesus. Learn to weigh out conflict instead of dismissing facts. The thing is, uh, uh, you, the truth, you, you try to dis, dismiss the truth. You try to, uh, when, when the facts, are, when, the, when the painting's on the wall, as they would say, it's there, you, you um, it's over, it's finished, it's done, but you dismiss it because it's not in line with what you think. Yeah, or what you believe. People think because they have an opinion about something that makes them right. Do you know what I mean? Same old thing, just because you're offended doesn't make you right. Just because you throw all your toys out of the cot doesn't make you right. The truth always stays the truth. Doesn't matter what angle you look at it from. It stays the truth. Take responsibility to finish what you start. Where can you start doing that? Yeah. <laughs> But some of you try to get out of it. Which means, is that old thinking? Yes. Is that the old way of doing things? If you see yourself as a new creation, don't you supposed to do things differently? Uh, God is a finisher. He began creation one day and finishes on the sixth. Christ is a finisher. When He hung on the cross, He said, it is finished. Paul the Apostle said, I have finished my course and I have kept the faith. Paul was a finisher. All responsible people are finishers. Just to dive off track a bit. If you're responsible and you're taking responsibility for uh, changing your life, which you need to do. Um, if you don't and you, you, you try to get out of here, uh, does, that cause in, does that cause unity between you and your family? Okay, so why would you think it's the right thing to do? If everything, if, if God demands a blessing in unity... If you cause, everything that doesn't cause unity is disunity. That, that doesn't matter how you look at it, it won't cause unity. It will destroy it or scar it. And just because you think you're okay, it doesn't mean that you are. You know, you get stages in rehab, ladies and gentlemen. You get the honeymoon stage where you just arrive and you think, ooh, ooh man. Fixing life. And you carry on and then you hit the, hit the ground and you're like, oh, I'm in rehab. You know, and then, and then you hit a dip. The dip is like, ugh, no, man, this is place isn't for me. You know, I can fix my life. I don't need all of this. I don't need six months of time. I don't need, I don't need to actually tell me what to do. I know what I did wrong. I can just go do that and not do that again. Da -da 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 -da. Now you get corrected. Ugh, now it even goes even further. They don't even know what they're talking about. No, 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 no. And then eventually you come to realize, like, yo. I don't know much. And then that turns. And then slowly but surely, you were there. Now you are, so you have to make up this ground at least. And this is where people give up. Which means you left even worse when you started. How's that smart? This is, this is a process. It doesn't matter how you look at it, but this, the six months of you are a process. You have to complete the process. So see, there'll be ups and downs and ins and outs and you'll fight you and you'll do some extras and maybe some punishment and all kinds of stuff. But this is a process. Uh, examples of this thinking error or examples of the thinking error. Forget what I said yesterday about waiting on a job and decided to kick back. I know we, uh, we were doing okay an hour ago, but now I can't stand you. I had even every intention of saying, staying clean when I left the office, but my friend had some good stuff. Some tough stuff. So eight ways to be a better finisher. These are cool stuff here. 
So eight ways of being a better finisher because fragmentation stops you from completing anything. Simple as that. Number one is understanding uh, when you are most likely to quit. And if you don't know what causes you to quit, you're in denial. You must know yourself like this, eh? You must know yourself like this. Because if you, if you quit when things are getting hard, then when things get hard, you shouldn't quit. <laughs> That's that. It's, it's like that. But most of you don't, you don't like little things about you. So you, you, you make like they're not there. You know, the, the more you know yourself, the, the easier things will get. Then you know you, you don't put yourself in situations which you know you can't handle. Or not handle, which you know that uh, would be a danger to you. But sometimes people think that they can put them there because they're okay now. You cannot. Distribute your time wisely. You know, I've seen a video of a guy on meth where uh, he starts building a gazebo. I want you guys to, not to think back then, but I, but I want you to see what it looks like. Uh, and this is a meth and cat and all those kind of things do the same kind of thing. So this is what it looks like. And you might think that uh, you are doing something, but you are not. So he, he takes out the gazebo, smokes, takes out the gazebo, uh, starts putting everything there, starts looking at the plan. It takes him about five to ten minutes to just stare at this plan, then lose all interest in it. Goes back, smokes again, comes back, reads the same pamphlet another ten minutes. Lose interest in it. Go back. Now he starts putting this gazebo up. It takes him about, I think, six to eight hours to set up a gazebo. You can see him work. He goes, he goes, he goes, and then slowly but surely it just deteriorates. So when you think that you were working, you were not. Okay, so understanding when you are most likely to quit, there are a couple of points under that. It says, examine your past. Look where you gave up on stuff and, and what, they, what you gave up on and what was the reason for you for giving up. You know that uh, things are going to get hard, so you need to put things in place. That's planning. That's what thinking forward means. So you know that things are going to get hard. Let's take Dirk for an example. He's studying for a social worker. He just wrote exams. Uh, Dirk woke up every morning at 3 o'clock. Uh, every morning at three o'clock, studied, still met me in my office, 10 past six in the mornings. We chat around a little bit and then we pray. And then he goes home, he studies, but he goes to bed. <laughs> I think at half past seven. But he did that. So he's thinking for it. He knows that the best time for him to study is in the mornings when he gets his day started and he knows he likes sleeping, so he'll sleep at night. Well, early, 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 early night. After he eats, he'll sleep. That's thinking forward. That's making a plan. Not study when I find the time. See the accepted result in your mind. So work towards what you see. And most of you in this room see a successful, purposeful, hopeful life. If those are my values that I value, or those are the characteristics or the things I work towards, hope and all this kind of stuff, then I make decisions with that in mind. Set realistic expectations for yourself. Just because you start a business or you've got plans to start a business won't make you successful overnight. It doesn't happen like that. And if you have someone, if you're going to step into some kind of manager's position or whatever, then it's your responsibility to look after it. Because most of the people in this room doesn't know what they're going to do when they leave. And you should work towards something. Be realistic with your timetable. And the other one says, get better at finishing the small tasks in your life. Remember I showed you guys a video not too long ago about it. Make up your bed. Remember that? And there's a, you know, Jordan Peterson got, he's got the, the 12 rules for life. It's a book that he wrote. And uh, he says, set your, own, set your own house in order before you criticize the world. That goes for everybody in leaders' positions here. Yeah. You can't correct someone if your stuff's not in order. It falls on deaf ears. Get in the habit of completing all the tasks in your life. One of the most important reasons we stop before completing a project is to avoid criticism. Once a project is done and available for the world to judge, we tend to get apprehensive. Then we can rationalize reasons not to complete the task. The people that matter will not be unkind. 
There is no way to stop all the criticism, but you must choose to not allow to stop you from your progress. Especially when you leave. You'll be tuned and not going here, not going there. And then you, what you taught yourself the whole life is to give up when things get hard. So when, when your family, if your family, oh, I say this so much and I hope it just rings in your head. If your relationship with your family is so important to you, then the little criticism or the little, the little sidestep or the little distrust that they show you or, or those kind of things, it shouldn't matter. But you guys get so offended to it. You know, I know, bad experience. How many times did families phone me, Jacques, we wanted to test him. He said no. Because he said we didn't trust him. They don't. They don't trust you. Don't think that they do, they don't. And if it's important, you'll get tested. Doesn't that bull trust? So why do you want to avoid it? No, I don't think I have much more to say than that. Just be a finisher, man. At least. Okay, I hate if you like. Father God, just give us the courage to finish. Just give us vision to see where we are going. Just grow the hope in us, Father. Just hope, grow the faith in us. Grow the courage in us. And you know, all of this is for you. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.